Hello. I'm digging a shallow pit because in this video I'm going to create a wildlife log pile and it's important that it's partly buried. But this is one of two jobs I've been doing today. The first one was a wildlife hibernaculum which is actually under that pile of soil there. And if you want to watch the video about the wildlife hibernaculum you can click here. I'll also put it on the end cards to this video. So getting back to the wildlife log pile. The wildlife log pile is more than just a pile of logs in the corner of your garden. And I'll explain why in a moment. But for now, let me just dig a little bit more of this ditch. I think when we think of a wildlife log pile, we automatically think about things like birds, small rodents, frogs, newts and amphibians, possibly even some insects. But the wildlife log pile is an environment for so many more organisms than just those that we can see. It starts from the ground up with the soil and that's why it's important that the logs have a good contact with the soil and that's why I'm digging a hole because I'm going to put some of the logs in and bury them completely because the microorganisms in the soil at the very bottom end of the food chain are the catalyst which start the reaction, the process of decay, which goes on to feed the food chain right up to the very top. And that's why a log pile is an essential part of any wildlife garden. And when you think about the natural fauna and habitat of the UK, it's based around woodland. So a log pile kind of imitates the woodland floor. And so, so many of our native species are used to this kind of an environment. And that's why we've got to look after it. And in some cases, replace it as I'm doing here. I'm deliberately half burying many of these logs and I'm putting them in at a slight incline. Raised up at this end and leaning on top of the hibernaculum. Some of the logs will be completely buried and others will be half buried with the ends sticking out of the ground. Some of them will be completely exposed, so we'll have a variety of different environments for the wildlife in my garden. By burying them underground but close together, I am automatically creating some crevices and some nooks and crannies, and some air pockets for wildlife to crawl into and occupy. But by burying these logs in earth, I'm also creating direct contact between the wood and the soil. And this soil is absolutely packed with microorganisms. So when we create a log pile, we're not just providing an environment for organisms which we can see, we're creating a new, completely invisible world. When I was doing my research into the log pile, I looked at soil organisms and I learned that there are three levels of organisms in soil. The third level, the biggest, and they're known as macroorganisms. Things that eat things mechanically by chewing things like wood lice and worms. And that third layer of organisms in the soil actually feeds the second layer, things like springtails and nematodes and mold mites, because the springtails and nematodes and mold mites actually eats the poo, which is produced by the third layer. So you can see we have a food chain on an almost microscopic level because the third layer feeds the second layer and subsequently the second layer feeds the first layer which is known as microorganisms things like bacteria and fungi all this is happening in the log pile before our very eyes but we can't see it and if you want to know an interesting fact about microorganisms one gram of compost can contain as many as 100 billion cells of bacteria and that's more than the population of human beings on the planet in one gram. When it comes to locating your log pile, 
it wants to be in dapple shade direct sun and it can dry out and these organisms need moisture complete shade and it can be too cool so i've put mine in the shelter of this mature hedge and it's on a west facing hedge not south facing i believe it or not there are people i found from my research who advocate watering the log pile if it's at risk of drying out When it comes to sourcing the raw material for your log pile, the logs, it's best not to go out into the countryside and just pick up a load of dead wood because what you're actually doing there is damaging or impacting an existing wildlife habitat. My logs came from some large conifers which I was removing and also a dying plum tree. So they were already on site and if you haven't got any on site, might be an idea to ask a neighbour or a local tree surgeon. That way you are creating an additional new habitat or ecosystem for wildlife. I'm just scooping up the last bits of soil here to go on top of some of these chunky specimen logs. Now they will take years and years to decay but the process will be accelerated by contact with this soil and all that carbon which is locked up in these logs which might have been released had they been burnt can spend years and years being released and leached back into the food chain now i've got one huge log that i want to lay on top and i've chosen it specifically because it splays out on the end and i want that to act as a perch for birds so that when i'm sat in my hide which is going to be over here in the corner I'll be able to look at that perch and see all the birds come and go. And here it is. It's a big old thing. I wouldn't be able to lift it, I don't think, but I should be able to pivot it on its end. If I'm careful, up it goes. And gently down into place. That's what I mean by a perch. That's just what I wanted. And there's a small pile of earth here on the far side, which came out of the hole, which I just want to casually throw over the top. If you can locate your log pile near water, all the better, because nature and water go hand in hand. And I'm going to be digging a great big wildlife pond just to my left here. And you'll be able to see that in a forthcoming video if you subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already done so, I also hit the notification bell. Now there are those that advocate putting a stake down on either side of your log pile to stop it naturally splaying and expanding sidewards as it decays. And it would do that because as those billions of microorganisms do their work, the wood will decompose and compost and become brittle and sag into the earth. What I found here is a lovely bent piece of dead plum tree, which I'm just going to lay over the top like a saddle just to keep it in place. And that was part of a dying tree, which I felled and it's already well on its way to decomposition. Just imagine the billions and billions of bacteria in that tiny piece of dead wood. Now I've just got one more thing to do to my log pile before I'm finished for the day. I'm just going to spend a few minutes now with my electric drill and various size wood bits drilling holes into some of these larger logs that should help in two ways firstly it'll let the air and the moisture into the heart of the wood and help accelerate that decay process and here decay means life because it's those bacteria it might also potentially provide an environment for small insects to go into and occupy and possibly lay their eggs. I hope you found this video on making a wildlife log pile interesting and informative. Please do subscribe and hit the notifications bell and also comment below this video what's your latest wildlife project. Would you have done anything differently? 
Also, I'm about to do my wildlife pond, so if you hit the notifications bell, you'll know when I've published that video. And hopefully, I'll see you soon. Thank you.